a man that we have so much deep respect for. He's the founder and the president of the Remnant Christian Network. A Christian organization. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, please. A Christian organization with a global network of apostolic churches and missions. He's the chairman of the RCN Adulam Bible and Theology College. Let's welcome to Camp Meeting 2024, Apostle Arome, as he comes. Essential, I want to acknowledge the presence of a great elder that has given me the opportunity to stand here. Can we celebrate Dr. David? In him, we have seen an example of a follower of Jesus Christ. And there is nothing as powerful as a physical example that is set before your eyes. Once again, we want to salute the general of the gospel. Please, you may be seated as you turn your Bible. Turn your Bible to the book of Amos, chapter 3. In these days, there are strategic messengers that God wants to install in various places in order to facilitate his agenda. Guidians who need to take their places custodians that have been in custody of kingdom secrets will need to begin to deploy those secrets at this time. And by all means, watchmen will need to know how to keep their watches and to stand between heaven and earth and see that the secrets that God is unveiling at this time. In Amos chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servant, the prophet. So it is in the nature of God. It is in keeping with his protocol not to manifest surprises. It is in his goodwill to unveil the secrets of his heart to servants, people that are in active service, to people that have decided to serve his will. So when a man decides to serve the will of God, he puts himself in such a position of favor to reveal, to receive secrets that God intends to implement. When you see the prophets in that scripture, there is a suggestion that it has only to do with such as are in the prophetic ministry. If you read the scripture that says, touch not, 
my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. If you read it in context, you'll find out that that scripture was not written to pastors. That scripture was a description of the house of Israel. That all the members of the house of Israel are prophetic people. In this particular case also, it is not necessarily revealing or referring to those that operate in the prophetic office, but those that have been caught up in active service, and because of that, there is a position of favor that they have before God. This position of favor is what makes God to begin to reveal his secrets to them. There is no way we can advance the kingdom of God outside of the strategic intelligence that the Spirit makes available at this time. So it is in the nature of God to unveil secrets unto such functionaries that are in active service that are prophetic people. That's my first scripture. Second scripture is in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse number 3. Just like I told you, there are specialized workmen that God is going to domicile within territories to fast track and to facilitate his agenda. One of such specialized workmen and the watchmen. In the next 30 minutes, I want to talk about the role of the watchman, the way of the watchman. There are levels of civilization in the spirit that will not be downloaded into the natural if we don't have watchmen that can pick up the frequency of the policy direction of heaven. It means that the earth will be behind in technology the earth will not be able to catch up with the breaking technology that is sustained in the heavens. That's the kind of thing we have in the day of Eli, when there were no many open visions and the counsel of the Lord was scarce. It means that the technology of heaven could not come into the earth because there was a situation of disalignment. If you are still with me, say amen. When you look at the landscape of the body of Christ, you see a lot of developments that are not necessarily patterns that were unveiled in the heavenlies. That's what happens when the, the, <laughs> uh, when the counsel of God is cast and when we do not have access to open visions anymore. Our civilization will emerge from the earth. It will not emerge from heaven. Churches will begin to take up patterns and strategies that is consistent with the civilizations of the earth and will be behind in terms of the implementation of policy directions and civilizations of heaven. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you. Someone needs to tell me the reason why you pray. If you want to be truthful, you pray because you know our God answers. But the reason why God wants you to pray is not for answers. Even though he will give you answers so that he can satisfy your own desires. As it is written, the desires of the righteous shall not be cut off. He uses prayer as an excuse to bring you into the realm of disclosures. You see, are you with me? He gives you your answer. So. He says, call unto me and I will answer you. Because what you are looking for are answers. But I will use your attempt at prayer. I will use your attempt at reaching out to me to come into a greater economy of spiritual reality. I will bring you into the realm of great and mighty things that is beyond your conception, is beyond your understanding, and is beyond your perception. Now, these are the efforts that God uses to bring us into current technology in the realm of the spirit. 
And only people that are dedicated to the specialized labors of keeping watches in the spirit enjoy this privilege of being brought into the context, the economy of great and mighty things beyond the scope of our knowing. If you have read your Bible, the Bible says, there are such things that eyes have not seen. There are such things that ears have not heard. There are such things that have not even occurred into the heart of man. So those things that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, that has not entered into the heart of man are the things we can categorize as mysteries. Are you there? You don't learn mysteries. Mysteries are handed out to you. You don't generate them. And in the economy of God, there are things that are not compatible with your thinking processes that God wants to bring you into. And the way he does it is that he confronts you with them. He shows you. Many times when God wants to take you out of your box, your cocoon, what he does is that he confronts you with realities that your mind cannot process. If somebody still with me, say amen. amen. So I need to unveil to us the labors of a watchman. Such servants that are supposed to be in active service. Unto whom God is compelled to reveal kingdom secrets and new technologies in heaven so that they can download and begin to implement such technologies upon the face of the earth. Who is a watchman? A watchman is a spy. A watchman is a gatherer of spiritual intelligence. A watchman is a personality that sets his heart to receive the new dimensions, the new policies of heaven, the new technologies of heaven. He is a spy. And his operation as a spy is threefold. The watchman is a spy. There are three dimensions to his activities as a spy. Is a gatherer of intelligence. Now, I need to tell you something quickly because every one of us that is present here belongs to a family. What do you know about your family that you were not told, that you picked up in the spirit? You traveled into the realm of reality and you stumbled upon that fact. If there are no spies among your people, it will be impossible to fast track the technology and the intention of God among those people. You, your life will be described by patterns, cycles, and circles. Just because there is no spy in your midst that has the capacity to spy into intelligence. There are three scopes, three aspects three dimensions into which this spy must get intelligence. The first dimension that this spy must reach into to secure intelligence is that he must be able to spy into what God is saying. What is God saying? What is God saying about Nigeria? What is God saying about the continent of Africa? What is God saying about your family? What is God saying about your tribe? Because when you study the Bible critically, you come to discover that God has a policy for each tribe in each season. There is a reason why he ordained that you will be a part of that people group, a part of that tribe. If you don't understand the policy direction of heaven for that tribe, you will just 
you will be like a principality that is measured into time. The technology that you are going to implement is time-based. It means that your pilgrimage was in, in disalignment. So we need spies that can spy into what God is saying. That's number one. Number two, we need spies. A, a watchman should also be able to spy into what angels are saying, what angels are doing. Because in the implementation of the purposes of God, the angelic quadrant is critical. Messengers are going to be dispatched. So if you can collide with the messages that these messengers are dispatching, it will give you an idea of the policy that heaven is trying to implement at a certain time. Number three, these spies must be able to spy into what Satan is doing. Once upon a time, we were in a prayer group on campus and there was this lady that had the gift of prophecy. She normally weeps before she prophesies. We're not experienced, but the oil upon her was genuine. And in one of those days, after heated prayer, she began to prophesy about me. And she said that a lady was going to be galvanized from the kingdom of darkness and dispatched to ensure that I don't follow, I don't fulfill my destiny. She picked that intelligence up from a meeting that was held in some high-powered coven at the time. After seven years of waiting for this mishap, and it did not come to pass, I felt it was fake. Those were the days when I was posted from the depot in Makodi to Lagos. And when I was posted to Lagos, that same movie that the lady prophesied about began to play out. Nine years later. In fact, the lady said that the delegation of witches that will advance this agent to pray over my destiny have never failed on their as any assignment before. And the possibility of me surviving to do ministry is dependent on that victory. Are you there? I prayed about it. I fasted for many years and it didn't happen so I now forgot about it in the seventh year. And when I forgot about it in the seventh year, it began to manifest in the ninth year, nine years into the future. The reason why I'm here today is because the intelligence that was received gave me the opportunity to prepare for the battle. And I can tell you that if not that there was an insight, I would not be standing here today. Somewhere along the line in the course of the battle, I was brought into the remembrance of the utterances that that prophecy captured. The question is this, what if that intelligence did not exist at all? You will not know how to take your journey. You will not know how to discipline yourself. You will not know the danger signs that is suggestive of the end of your ministry upon the face of the earth. But that intelligence was put on display and at some point when the battle became heated, through the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit, he brought to remembrance those matters. You know, the Holy Spirit has a very powerful ministry. Not everything is important at a certain time. So he can isolate from the data bank of truth that you have kept in your heart. Are you there? You, you know, your mind is a temporary storage system. But your heart has an unlimited storage capacity. You have not done spiritual business sufficient enough 
if your storage, if the storage where you keep the things you are expecting to use in the future is in your head, it, the, the temporary storage of your head cannot keep stuff beyond three days. It will fade out. Are you still with me? Oh, you are not with me. In order for us to be able to watch the realm of God and profit from our watching, there are five things that we look for as watchmen in the spirit. First of all, we look for trumpets. Trumpets. When we talk about trumpets, we're talking about announcements that have been made in heaven. Announcements that capture the strength of coming seasons. Announcement that captures the end of epochs, ions, and eras so that we can know how to take our journey and to partner with the grace that God has made available to establish new seasons in the implementation of his agenda. Come with me to the book of Revelation quickly. Revelation chapter 12, beginning from verse number 7. In Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, the Bible says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10 is my emphasis. And I heard a voice. This is an announcement. This is like a town crier passing an information, passing intelligence of the current status of things. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come. You see, there was an announcement to give insight into the season that has come, appeared in the heavens. And the reason why this season has appeared in the heavens is because a major opposition has been dealt with and silenced. So a new season has been born. And any time there are seasons that are not announced, just like the manifestation of Jesus upon the face of the earth was not announced before time, in that generation where Jesus manifested, so people could not take advantage of that visitation. The Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. The, the announcements that were supposed to be made in accompaniment of such a visitation were not made. And so, people could not discern the move of God that was shrouded in the manifestation of Jesus, the Son of God. His own received him now. And now it comes salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Why? Because the accuser of the brethren is cast down. The accuser of the brethren has suffered loss. The accuser of the brethren has lost a major case. So a new season that ushers in salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ as he made. You see, if this season is not announced, if this town crier does not shout, does not cry, there will be no way you will know. Are you there? Oh, you are not with me. How many of you still remember Matthew chapter 11 verse 12? Please put it on the screen for me. So as we navigate in the spirit, the first thing we seek is to pick up the trumpets. The trumpets. Those days in ministry, 
If I stand to teach like this, I'm anointed. But if you put me on a crusade ground, the anointing will lift from my head. Because of that, I had a policy, a personal policy on crusading that I don't preach on crusades. It's not the Lord that said that. It's me in view of the obvious. I can be so <laughs> anointed in a conference like this, but when I'm preaching and there's no roof over my head, the oil will escape. And even if I worship, you know all the things we do to generate oil, the oil doesn't answer to me outside. So I came up with a policy. It's not God's will for me to preach outside until I stumble into an announcement in heaven. Thank God for that intelligence. Nothing still changed after the announcement. It's just that I got an invitation to preach on the crusade ground. And because of the announcement, I decided to try. I've not recovered from that attempt. <laughs> so in a, in a, when there's an announcement of a new season, you might discover that you, you begin new journeys. New journeys that you did not envisage was in view for you in terms of the shape of the grace that you have carried. May your reference point not be your past in the name of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, the Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist, this is an announcement. An announcement that reveals that there's a difference between time and timing. This one is timing. It's just like when a woman conceives, then timing begins. There is a biological clock that sets into motion the moment she conceives. And from the time of conception, you know you are counting for time nine months. Are you there? So this is timing calculation. From the time, oh, you're not with me, of John the Baptist, until now, the clock is still ticking. There are many expectations that you should not have if there is no conception in view. There is no need for you to go shopping looking for pampas. But the moment there is conception, you are within a framework of timing and there are many strange things that you begin to do in view of the timing that has kick-started. This scripture is a revelation of timing. It says the shape of kingdom activity change to accommodate violence in the spirit has been introduced as one of the virtues that kingdom men need to have because of what? Timing. So when you go into the realm of the spirit, when you, when you travel, exploring Christ as astronauts explore God, we watch out for trumpets. Second thing we watch out for, are scrolls. Scrolls. A scroll is a decree that has been made in the heavens that has not yet been implemented in the natural. If you have eyes in the spirit and you go into any city and you labor, you will find out decrees from heaven that are hanging out over that city. Scrolls that have not yet been impl implemented. Meanwhile, it will also interest you to know that not only scrolls from the throne of God exist over cities, we also have verdicts that have been launched from the kingdom of darkness hanging over the city. Are you still with me? And the fact that these verdicts and, and policies and decrees have, are hanging over the city is suggestive of the fact that there is a gap in terms of an implementation agent in the natural do you still remember how Peter analyzed the day of Pentecost? He said, this is that which prophet Joel speak. It means this policy has been hanging in the heavens since Joel. All we did was to create the machinery for download and implementation. So the question now is, have you been able to spy into the scrolls of your family? The intercessors that labored in your family before you arrived, 
Was it that they did not download anything? Was it that they did not secure any covenant with God that is hanging over the family? You are trying to lay a new foundation instead of you to, to, to hack into the scrolls that already exist. Oh my God. Now, see, you must understand, you must understand that Daniel had to understand by books the length of time that was captured by Jeremiah the prophet in terms of the space of the captivity. That's what we call transgenerational collaboration. Transgenerational collaboration is possible when we know that there are scrolls that are hanging. May, may your journey in destiny not be based on your own effort alone in the name of Jesus Christ. When God assigned me to my little city and I love my city, the first thing I noticed in that environment is that when a preacher comes into limelight, it does not last, it dies. My city was noted to be the graveyard for the rising stars. In fact, the last rising star that died in his prime. He was the first man that I saw with my eyes that was able to fill our square. Our city square is a 15,000 seater community space. 15,000 seater. The first man that filled it in the name of Jesus Christ for a crusade campaign in my own lifetime. That man was my pastor. In my city, it's a big deal for 15,000 people to sit down and the reason why they are sitting down is for Jesus. Oh! Oh! They can sit down for money. If you say you have some money to distribute, they will sit down from morning till night. But if it's Jesus, uh, you will need grace. <laughs> So this man, at 45 years old, broke the jinx. But he died after that crusade. And for 22 years after his death, nobody could lift that banner up. So I knew that there were mysteries that were operational in the territory. And we needed to find out what is going on. Thank God for your Bible school notes. But when you get to the field, <laughs> you will need something more. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. So we began to inquire, what is hanging over this landscape? What is happening here? He gave some intelligence. And then... He began to reveal the shape of the city and the policy that he had over the city. That Satan had marked that city because in the policy direction of heaven, the city is a city that has the potential to become a trigger for a move of God. Ah. I was praying one day, you know, when Pastor David comes now and he begins to minister, people will begin to fall. In public meetings, I've never fallen before. <laughs> I, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with anybody. That, I'm just telling you, my own, this is my own story. But I was praying one day and I fell all by myself. <laughs> when I fell, this is the experience I believe I have. Because it's difficult to know whether I was in the, in the spirit or in the natural. It's difficult to know what was really going on. But I was carried into the past and showed people that God gave that mantle to begin to advance that revival. The moment you take possession of it or heaven gives you, whether you are prepared for it or not, there are some demons that are in that territory that will notice that you are shining. And the moment they notice that you are shining, 
you become an, an object of attack. If I tell you the things I have seen, that is, I don't know with which eye, which with this one, or I have seen things. Not good things. Oh. oh. Are you here? You know, a lot of us here are praying for anointing. I know there's somebody there saying, <laughs> let me, let me inform you. Let me give you full insight. <laughs> you are at peace now. <laughs> there are some things that if you carry, you will become visible. So I was carried into the past. I was shown someone that was given that honor in the kingdom of God and he began to generate influence, such influence that is unnatural. And the kingdom of darkness began to suffer on the account of the influence that he was gathering for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did they do? Boop. Then the mantle fell upon another one. That one did not even last for long. He was not trained. He was just um, a stopgap measure. He was not trained to be able to contain the honor that comes with that privilege in the kingdom. He was not trained to be able to manage his heart. Are you there? There is, there is a lecture of heart management that we need to receive. There are sometimes in order for you to manage your heart, you refuse for people to serve you. You are coming and people want to take your Bible. You need to grow first before they take it. May, may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. You need to grow before you can interpret that service in a, an accurate light. So there were many laws that God put in place to help my heart. Because the man that I was shown in that encounter that I had, he became loud. His lifestyle changed. Because of the honor. You would think that the money coming into your life is to boost your wardrobe. Oh. <laughs> and Satan will allow you to make all the mistakes. And all these mistakes you are making, giving expression to the vanity of your heart, is going to make you vulnerable. And Satan is patient. Before you know it, And God, God showed me three men that could not handle that thing that he gave. That was the reason why I went underground for eight years. The reason why I went underground for eight years was to present my heart before the shining light. So that that light will burn on it. And expose every darkness in it. Because it is a very strange thing for you to enter into visibility without being trained by God. I speak in parables. I speak in parables. So when I got the scroll that was on the city, I got the verdict that was upon the city, I began to order myself. I, are you there? I began to order my life. The reason why I was ordering my life was that I was recommending myself to God if he could consider me for that kind of role, that kind of honor. Before God, I, in fact, I didn't ask him for the whole mantle. I said, he should divide it into two and give me half. The reason why God gave me the encounter was to make me see that I was not the original person that was called for the assignment. And if the original person was cut off, <laughs> you already know the answer to this. <laughs> and gradually the mantle began to speak. The mantle did not begin to speak because it, it was created because I showed up. It existed even before I was born. And many people have passed through territories without touching the substance that is hanging over it because they could, not, they could not spy into the content of the scrolls that were hanging over cities, content of the scrolls hanging over their families, the content of the scrolls hanging over their nation. So 75% of Christians are just in the rat race. Running without a goal. 
May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, when you begin to explore the realm of God, look out for seals. Seals. Seals are classified intelligence. If you go into the security vault of serious intelligence officers, information is categorized according to classes. And there are dimensions of information that is not available to the general public. It can create panic, can create fear, it can create a response that will hurt the sociology of the terrain. So that kind of information is classified. When you are dealing with classified matters, part of Joseph's problem was that he was not trained to handle classified matters. He was given access to classified matters and he went and was speaking it to his brothers, discussing it <laughs> casually. His challenges emerged from his inability to handle secret matters. Classified matters. Are you there? So there are things about your life, there are things about your city that are sealed. They are sealed so that you yourself and the people around you will not begin to relate with those things commonly. You will need to pay a price in order for you to enter into the economy of sealed things. And if we go to the book of Revelation chapter 8, you are going to see how seals are broken. The environment under which the secret things of the kingdom are broken to bring us into new journeys. Are you there? Or you are not there? Because you are not there, we will close that aspect of the syllabus. <laughs> I am speaking in parables. And I pray that your heart will be open to understand these parables that I am speaking about. The guy received seals were broken and he saw the future. And he went and started discussing with unauthorized people. Well, the Lord will help us. It's not everything you discuss. Oh, it's not everything. Luke chapter 4 verse 16 to 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 18 is one of the scriptures for scrolls. But I don't have time to be able to work that out. That was a scripture when Jesus entered into the synagogue, he was given the scroll that pertained to the book of Isaiah. And he found where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. That scripture was a compendium of the scrolls that were written about him. So that scripture was addressed to him. He was the fulfillment of that scripture. Are you there? Now, 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 have you found yourself in the scripture? Have you found your destiny in the scripture? Have you found your scroll? The first platform in which your scroll is revealed is the scripture. God anticipated your coming, so he wrote something in the Bible that is reflective of your own ordination. If you have not found it, it means you are spiritually lazy and you like some time in the wilderness. Jesus spoke about the errand that the anointing upon him was designed to fulfill. Oh my, let me leave you there. That's scroll. But I was talking about what? Seal. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Quickly, as I try to round up. Are you there? We still have some other matters. But I will stop on this matter. Number four, thing you hunt for as a watchman is to understand the times. Number five, thing you hunt for as a watchman is to be able to interpret signs and omens. So I will stop at number three, which is seals. 
The Bible says that the secret things belong unto our God, but the, those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. The reason why the Bible is full of a miscalculations of the devil is because of sealed things. There were secrets that were made secret before the foundation of the world, before creation started. And as long as Satan doesn't have access to the economy of the sealed things, Satan cannot win. So it is the secrecy of the mysteries that God puts in place. It's their secrecy that is designed to make, to elevate you in spite of the opposition of the devil. The Bible says, for instance, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, none of the princes of this world had known the wisdom that God kept hidden before the foundation of this world. For if they had known it, they will not have crucified the Lord of glory. It means that there is a perpetual re regret in hell right now. And the reason is because God set them up through seals, things that were hidden. So if God wants to promote you in spite of Satan, one of the things he hid concerning your life, he now unveils it. Those hidden things are dead are for your glory, according to scripture. Oh, you are not following me. Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He revealed the deep secret, the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. So it is God's culture, it's God's nature to reveal secret things. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the honor of kings to search it out. The matter is concealed, but you will need a certain dimension of ranking and authority in order for you to uncover it. And any time you uncover it, you receive an advantage in terms of advancement in spite of the devil's presence. That's the reason for which you need to know how seals are unstopped. In Revelation chapter 5, we see a book that is sealed with seven seals on the inside and on the back side. God's wisdom has been trapped in a policy document that has been released and sealed with the seal of the glory of God. So we see in that environment there in the book of Revelation, the things that are necessary in order for a seal to break. And it's in the atmosphere of prayer and the atmosphere of worship that seals break. That is the means by which we gain ascendancy. The means by which we sustain a position of favor that is required to peep into the secrets of God. When seals break, it means that new journeys have been authorized. When seals break, it means that you will be confronted with new warfare. When seals break, it means that new possibilities are in view. If you, your work with God is steady and steadfast, you should be able to know when seals break, even if you were not told. You will just notice that there is a new grace. And when you see that new grace, you need to go back into your closet and ask God, Why? Don't give an interpretation to the meaning of the new grace. Maybe it's, it's, a, it's a, um, an intercontinental ballistic missile that will take two cities. Don't interpret it. Oh my God. Are you here? It is easy for you to know when a seal has broken, your clearance level increases. There were things you did not have authority to manage before. You begin to see those things at commonplace. It means that there's an authorization that has taken place to increase your expanse, to increase your reach, your coverage. When you find those symptoms in your life, 
It is suggestive of the fact that new journeys have begun. If you lack, if you are wise, you will go back and find out why. We have six minutes and I want us to pray. Not everybody will be a pulpit minister. Some are called to be watchmen. Like I told you, there are 12 special ministers that must be deployed on the scene if this end time revival will reach the ends of the earth as God intended. One of them is the guardian. Another one is the custodian. God commits secrets to him like Simeon that death could not take until his eyes had looked upon the salvation of God. Then we have the watchmen. The watchmen are spies. The watchmen are obtainer of, obtainers of intelligence. The watchmen spy to see what God is doing, what angels are doing and what Satan is doing. So in a measure, all of us operate in these matters, this in different measures. Are you there? There are some that are watchmen as a major line of ministry. Then we have the ministry of the psalmist. Because anytime God wants to do something, he creates sound first before he begins to do. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible said there was a sound like a rushing mighty wind before God came. In order for God to do something, he creates a sound. The psalmist is a carrier of that sound. In fact, the, the manifestation of psalmist is an indication of the, fact, of the new things that God is doing. When you hear the lyrics of their singing. I don't want to talk too much. I want to keep some secrets. When you hear what they are singing and the anointing is resting on the things they are saying. Many of you hear psalmists sing and they come in epochs, they come in seasons, they come in eras to advertise the power of that season. Because God will make sound before he begins to do. So no one else can preach your sermon. No one else can sing your song. There's a sound in your spirit. And no one else can sing it. But the sound in your spirit is meant for a season. It's meant to advertise a time. If you arrive before your season, no one will hear your sound. Because it doesn't bear witness of anything. I know you are trying and you gather... Because of the internet, you gather messages from here, you gather, download here, you download there, and you have not found the cord of your heart. Meanwhile, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, he tried the reins. It means there is a music, there is an instrument he wants to play on your inside that is in harmony with the atmosphere of God in heaven. Because your heart is designed like a harp. So he wants to string it. Lack of fellowship with God and sin makes it impossible for the sound to come out. Sometimes he will need to string your heart so that the strings will be in alignment with the kind of sound he wants to make. There's a lot of work that God does in your heart. The scripture says it is God that worketh in us. It means God has decided to set up a workshop inside. It is from that workshop that he, he, he projects his desires. Are, are you there with me? It's from that workshop that he mobilizes you with grace to be able to actualize his plan. And whenever God begins to bring his bride out from the forest, out from the swamp, to put her of wrinkles and spots, he sings. I don't have time to take you to the book of Songs of Solomon. So that I tell you a little about a parable called the Song of Songs. If you are still with me, say Amen. Amen. 
Somebody came and planted good seed on, on the land. He went to sleep. Huh? And an enemy came. It was not everybody that slept. It was men. Men. Those ones are guardians. Their work is to check the territorial integrity to see that there is no trespass. Adam was a guardian. Because he was called to dress the garden and to keep it. His assignment was military. His assignment was the assignment of a security personnel. How the devil was able to possess the serpent and they found themselves in Eden. Hey, it means that somebody became blind. Men slept. Some of the challenges in your families is because there were men that were supposed to serve Satan, they slept. Some of the challenges in Nigeria, some men slept. Are you not tired of sleeping? Are you not tired? Who will man the borders? Who will keep the territory? Who will warn us that danger is coming? Somebody cry. There is a territory committed to you to man. May you not sleep on it. There is a territory given into your hands for you to keep. May you be awake, alive unto God enough to be drawn, for your attention to be drawn of possible infringement on the territory. I've slept for too long. Now when I wake out of my sleep, I awake from my slumber. The days of the holy watches of God are upon us and the least among our numbers must become as strong as David. Somebody cry to him in a moment. We want to fill this atmosphere with the hunger of our soul for put on notice to the God of heaven that you cannot bypass this generation. You don't need to reach out to our children. We are here to do your will. Oh, someone needs to cry. Hey, 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 needs to arise the enemy has been going in and out he has plundered he has taken he takes he takes and he takes again because men are asleep there is a slumber people have taken to sleep but today there is a clarion call from the heavenly oh my god Oh my God! Holy Hallelujah! Oh, oh, sila boko mantelia.
discovered in Satan. That which is lost must be found. Our nation must be liberated. Nigeria must be liberated in our lifetime. We must be able to see the victor sword. Yeah. <laughs> 